How's it going everybody? My name is MDK, WLAN, otherwise known as MDK, and today we're going to talk about staticking IP addresses while having DHCP enabled. So, pretty much everybody has DHCP enabled, and I guess before I even go into that, uh, DHCP stands for Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. It is pretty much the thing on your network that gives you an IP address. Um, further explanation for on that, uh, Google DHCP, and it'll, it'll break it down for you, like how DHCP works, discovery, blah, 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 all that stuff. Uh, so essentially, if you're going to set a static IP, it can't be in what's called DHCP uh, scope. So the DHCP scope is the range of IP addresses that DHCP is allocated to use. So if you look in my case here, uh, DHCP, the scope is set to 50, and it starts at IP um, 192, 168, 1, uh, 100. So it'll go from uh, blah, 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 100 to 149, and that's 50 different users. So if that gets full, no, well, then you're shit out of luck. You're not getting an IP, but 50 users, my God. Anyway, when I'm setting up a static IP, I can't use 192.168.1.100 to 149. But what I can use is 192.168.199 or 192.168.1.150. So pretty much any IP but 100 and one, uh, 100 to 149 I can't use and you can't use like 192.168.0 or one that's already being used or 255 so it's kind of getting into network stuff and I really don't want to explain it but just suffice to say that you can't use 0 and 255 in any IP that's already being enabled as well as your DHCP scope so, in most cases, your DHCP server is hosted by your router. So, the reason why this is kind of complicated is because you need to be able to access your DHCP server. Which, everybody's network is different. It could be hosted on a layer 3 switch. It could be hosted on an actual DHCP server itself. It could be your router. It could be your wireless access point. It could be anything. So being able to find out this information of your DHCP scope is kind of, it's very important to know, but accessing this information is kind of a pain in the ass. I'm willing to bet that all, for a lot of networks, it's the default gateway IP, and that's pretty much what I'm going to run with in this video. So, for the most part, this is pertaining to Windows, which is, I know, weird because pretty much everything I do on this channel uh, has to do with Arch Linux or just Linux in general, but hey, it's going to be a Windows a Windows episode, I guess. So within Windows, it doesn't really matter what version of Windows you're in. Um, like I'm in eight, you can be in XP or seven. It's pretty much the same. Uh, go open up Command Prompt. So um, Windows key R or Windows key Run, whatever. Uh, Windows key Run CMD, blah blah blah. Just get to command prompt IP config forward slash all. It gives you a bunch of different information. If you have um, VirtualBox installed or VMware, you're going to get a bunch of information. But pretty much what you want to look for is what you're connected with. And that's very important. So for, for me, for example, I'm using uh, Wi Fi, I'm not using an actual wired connection. So if you're using Ethernet, um, look at Ethernet adapter if you're using wireless look for wireless and what you want to look for is your default gateway now even with DHCP enabled like I have an IP I have a static IP for this computer but even if you have DHCP enabled which if you can tell if it's enabled by DHCP enabled and it would say yes um, it's gonna tell you what your default gateway is by default so pretty much just copy and paste or just remember what this IP is uh, 192.168.1.1 .1. um, another thing to note down besides the default gateway is your subnet mask <sighs> um, trying to think of how to explain this so your subnet mask is essential and you need to know it in order for this to work um, most private networks on a private IP scheme it's going to be a class C which is 192.168 
if it's a class B, it's 172, blah, blah, blah. If it's class A, it's like, it's 10.0000. And your subnet mask applies to it as well. So class C would be 255, 255, 255. Uh, class B would be 255255, class A would be 255000. There's an alternative method of writing that, it's called CIDR, and it's a ton better. So, anyway, you need to look for your default gateway. Copy down your default gateway IP and your subnet mask IP, and type in 192.168 blah 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 into your browser, and you'll probably be emptied, uh, prompted to enter um, authentication or credentials rather normally it's like admin 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 password admin pass administrator 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 password administrator pass it's all different it could actually be Cisco Cisco if you're using Cisco it's normally that um, what you could do is just go wherever it is so if it's downstairs upstairs wherever in your house and just pick it up and look underneath it it'll tell you the information that you're looking for so when you get inside your device like this for example uh, for me it's on the front page I don't even have to look very far for it uh, for you like if it's a Rosweld or a Netgear it might be somewhere else pretty much you just want to look for DHCP server settings and you should be able to find this information out so now we're gonna switch over to how to set a uh, static IP in Windows pretty much so one second so this is within Windows 8 um, it shouldn't be too much different from 7 and XP um, well I take XP back it shouldn't be too much different uh, from 7 so primarily this is gonna be I guess a Windows 8 guide uh, my apologies uh, so depending on what you're actually connected as um, you want to go to control panel, control panel, network sharing center. Pretty much just open up control panel and type in network and it'll come up with this. So that's how you get to it. And whatever device you're actually connected to. So if you're on wired, click wi click your wired device. If you're on Wi-Fi, click that. So we're going to click that and we're going to get Wi-Fi status or Ethernet status. It'll give you a bunch of different information, packets, bytes, blah, blah, blah and you want to click properties and you go to a bunch of different stuff and look for IP protocol version 4 TCP IP v4 and click properties now if you have DHCP settings enabled it's gonna this will all be grayed out and it'll be ha it'll be obtain IP address automatically and it'll obtain DNS automatically as well so all the information that we got from the command prompt we can enter in here so, uh, whatever IP address you want to use, as long as it's outside of your DHCP scope. So, for example, I could theoretically use 192.168.1.150 or 99, and they would both work. So, whatever your IP address is, put in, and then whatever your subnet mask was, put that in as well. If you're on a Class C network, it's 255, 255, 255, Class B, like I said before, all that information before, and then your default gateway. So DNS is rather interesting. The DNS server is essentially, it converts Google.com into whatever the IP address is for Google. And that's pretty much why you need a DNS server. So I use Google's DNS, and a lot of people will probably advise to not. The main reason why people say not to use Google for a DNS is Google tracks you. Well, it, not you specifically, but it tracks, it, it tracks your information. And a lot of people are privacy hungry, and to a certain extent I am, but I use Google for almost everything. Like, I have Google Drive, I have a Gmail. So, what's a bit more information really going to tell them about me? Uh, it doesn't bother me too much. So, if you don't have a problem with using Google... Uh, it's all eights or two eights and two fours. If you want to use your ISP's DNS server, um, that information will be given to you through uh, when you did IP config slash all, and your DNS servers will be shown. Um, and in that case, it's using your ISP's DNS servers, which I guess if you have like Verizon or 
Comcast, you might not want to use their DNS servers because, yeah, Verizon's not very kind with people using, like, Usenet or Torrents. So, you might want to just change your DNS server altogether. But once you get all these settings enabled, click OK, and click Close, and click Close, and Close This, and going back in the command prompt and make sure that your IP is actually static. Uh, for Wi-Fi, you're probably going to have to uh, rejoin your wireless. So I'm in Windows 8, like I said before, and you want to click Connect it, click Disconnect. It should um, cycle. Like if you're on Wi-Fi, it'll cycle your connection, so it updates all the information. Um, but apart from that, that's how you set up an IP in Windows 8. Um, if people want me to, I can make a guide on how to do it in Arch. It's not that hard. Like I said, setting a static IP isn't hard. It's just finding out all this different information, which is kind of a pain in the ass. Because there's so many different variables that different people have. So, it all, it's all dependent and different things. So... If you guys would like me to make a video on how to static an IP in like Ubuntu or uh, Gentoo or Arch or Sabion or whatever, just let me know. I'll, I'll be more than more more than glad. I can't speak today. More than glad to make a video. Um, for example, I've been using Sabion for like the past month because um, while I like Gentoo, it's much easier not having to do Gentoo from source. I mean, it's Gen 2 from nothing, just building from scratch. Um, but, I don't know. It's pretty much all I have to say. So, if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, uh, what video you would like me to make, please let me know. I do know that my videos are lacking. Like, this is the first video I've made in almost over, it's over a month. And I do apologize for that, but um, I'm trying to focus on schooling and all the different stuff, so... Please bear with me. But apart from that, guys, hope you guys have a great day, and I hope you're able to set up your static IP. Have a good one, guys. See you later.